Yes. Excuse me. Yes. yes. OK. Yes. OK. <coughs> you should make copies and give to people. But this, of course, has to do. Now it's pretty much what everybody should know, but it's good just to review so you get your facts straight. And since Christmas is around the corner, people worship baby Jesus and have birthday party. We see not pleasing to God. We'll cover that more in December. But it's a good introduction and a prelude to it. So birthday celebrations are pagan. All right, so I already got the scriptures here, but just have your Bible handy in case we need it. So Pharaoh's and I got the Hebrew meanings to it. Birthday is the day you were born. And came into this wacky world. So it's kind of special in a way. But we'll see, as you know, that the pagans are the ones who really celebrated it, or the heathens. So Pharaoh's birthday, Herod's birthday, and we have the scriptures for it. Matthew 14, 6, Mark 6, 21, Pharaoh and Herod were heathens. All scripture shows or commands the celebration of birthdays. And <clears throat> Birthday ceremonies, and we see that you can look these up later. You can review this. Numbers 9 3, they had ceremonies, but they didn't have a ceremony for their birthday. They were circumcised eight days. The men were after they were born, but that wasn't a birthday present. Like, I might have heard it. <laughs> so, custom, lawful, order, ordinance. Pharaoh and Herod were obey their heathen laws and customs as of a worship on their B days to worship heathen idols, and Israel did their ceremonies to worship Yahweh. But never no commandment to do worship on their birthdays for Israel. So there are scriptures there. So you should be familiar, Jeremiah 10 2, don't do like the heathen. Psalm 106, 34, so they mingle with the heathen, learn their works. Ephesians 4, 17, we cover these when we just did Halloween, it says don't do like the Gentiles, the heathens. So that's what they do, so it's not that birthdays are evil. Don't, don't ever say it's wrong to have a birthday. It's not wrong to have a birthday, because everybody's going to be born. But we're really to be born again, see, of the Spirit. So nothing wrong with just counting how old you are. It's not a sin, but to do anything like the heathens and pagans is sin because as we've covered before, they walk in darkness. They're not worshiping the creator. So let's give some history. Scholars who study the Bible say that the earliest mention of a birthday was around 3000 BCE, could have even gone before, but it was a reference to a Pharaoh's birthday. But further study implies that this was not their birth into the world, but their birth as a god. When Egyptian pharaohs were crowned in ancient Egypt, they were considered to have transformed into gods. This was a moment in their lives that became more important than even their physical birth. When Egyptian pharaohs were crowned in ancient Egypt, they were considered to have transformed into gods. This was a moment in their lives that became more important than even their physical birth. Pagans such as ancient Greeks believe that each person had a spirit that was present on the day of his or her birth. Well, I hope it was a spirit of an angel, the Holy Ghost. This spirit kept watch and had a mystic relation with the God on whose birthday that particular individual was born. So you see each of these pagan days all the time had to do with the gods and goddesses. And God said there's no other gods before me. And goddesses. So it's everything God rejects. Let's just continue. Gods and goddesses were a huge part of Greek culture. Greeks offered many tributes and sacrifices to appease the, these gods. The lunar goddess Artemis was no difference. 
As a tribute to her, the Greeks would offer up moon-shaped cakes. Happy birthday to you, too. Adorned with lit candles. Mm. Something to think about. Mm-hmm. Your little candles and birthday cakes come from. And the Greek goddess, Artemis. To recreate the glory and radiance of the moon. Do we worship the moon? No. And Artemis perceived beauty. Yeah. Well, Satan is not beautiful. The candles also symbolize the sending of a signal or prayer. Hmm. Blowing up the candles with a wish is another way of sending the message to the gods. They don't pray to guns. It is assumed that the Greeks adopted the Egyptian tradition by of celebrating the birth of a god. They, like many other pagan cultures, thought that days of major change such as these birthdays welcome evil spirits. They lit candles in response to these spirits almost as if they represented a light in the darkness. This implies that birthday celebration started as a form of protection. In addition to candles, friends and family would gather around the birthday person, protect them from harm with good cheers, thoughts and wishes. They would give gifts to bring even more good cheer that would ward off evil spirits. Noisemakers were also used to scare away the unwanted evil. <coughs> this seems to be the first time in history where a civilization Celebrate the birth of non-religious figures. Regular Roman citizens would celebrate the birthdays of their friends and family members. The government, however, created public holidays in honor of more famous citizens. Any Roman turning 50 years old would receive a special cake baked with wheat, flour, olive oil, granite cheese, grated cheese, and honey. But an important thing to note is that only men would experience this birthday celebration. Female birthdays were not celebrated until about the 12th century. Well, that's interesting. It reviewed in. So the women didn't really celebrate their birthdays at first. Early birthdays being tied to pagan gods led Christians to consider birthdays to be celebrations of evil. This lasted for the first few hundred years of the existence of the Christian church. It wasn't until the fourth century that Christians abandoned that way of thinking, began celebrating the birth of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Happy Chris Kringle. Also known as Christ Mass. Celebrating the birthday of Jesus was partly enacted to <coughs> recreate those who already celebrated Saturnalia, the Roman holiday, or recruit, I should say. I didn't read them. That to recruit those who already celebrated Saturnalia, the Roman holiday. At this point, birthdays had been celebrated around the world, even in China, where a child's first birthday was more special than most. I'm sure you got an egg roll with it. Kinderfest, which started in the late 18th century was a name for a German birthday party that is closest to today's style of parties. Those old Nazis did it again. No, I'm just joking. But, but the Germans are the ones who brought it in close to what we do now. This party was held for German kids, or kinder, and featured a birthday cake adorned with candles. Oh, how cute. Kids were given one candle atop the cake for each year they had been alive, plus one for the hope of living for at least one more year. Blowing out these candles while making a wish was a big part of these celebrations. These scriptures tell us that's what they did to the King of Queen of Heaven, made cakes and candles and what I already showed you. You can look these scriptures up yourself. It'll be your homework. Use eight and eleven cakes. Next 27. 1 Corinthians, Christians and leavened bread for communion. Remember his death, not birth. 1 Corinthians 11, 25. Hmm. 
All right, so up to more modern times, two sisters, Patty Hill and Mildred J. Hill, who happened to both be Kentucky school teachers, were, wrote a song called Good Morning to All. In 1893, that was published in a book for other school teachers. The original intent of the song was to be sung in class by students before starting the day. In the early days, that's all. A lot of times they started their days, the kids would sing a song to the teacher. Of course, when anything catches on, there are variations that are made. This song is no different. Robert Coleman published a songbook in 1924 that featured a song with a few extra lyrics that quickly came to overshadow the original lyrics. These new lyrics to that popular old tune became known as the birthday song today. In 1933, this new version was used in an Irving Berlin musical. He was a famous writer in the 30s and 40s, and you know, God bless America, and patriotic songs too. One of the Founding Hill sisters sued on the grounds that they held the copyright to the tune. They won the case, and <clears throat> the copyright still holds today. Some even believe this song is under copyright until the year 2030. Uh oh, a lot of people are going to get sued. Copyright proceeds are split with the copyright owner in the Hills estate. Estimated around two million a year. Wow. So all these scriptures here, you should be familiar. If you can find 19, Colossians 3, 16 says, Sing and teach and manage one another with spiritual hymns and psalms. From your heart, that's the commandment. So the melody, people, for some reason, they think they're just going to sing it. Here's really the history. They don't look it up. Maybe a few do, but most really don't know. That's why you should send these tracks out to people. <clears throat> and uh, good morning to all. You know, probably we go like, you know, happy birthday. I said good morning to all. Good morning to all. Then they change it to happy birthday to you. You look like a bamboo. Whatever. Okay, so that's the history and scriptural documentation. And uh, hope everybody has this in their files. I'll just send it to Roger and KK because I'm not sure they haven't. And uh, CJ, just send the video. You could stop if you're recording. Want to stop it? <clears throat> 